Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're back to work on our Ultimate SG Guitar Kit build here. Uh, this one's going to be fully upgraded as you know if you've been watching the series. If you haven't, go check it out. I'll put a card or whatever so you can see the playlist. And we're just at the end of our finishing process here. We've got our clear on and now it's time to take this back nice and smooth. Get rid of all this orange peel that you see partially because of the flame maple top. And we're doing a vintage semi-gloss finish on this one. So a very interesting finish on this because we've clear coated it in full gloss and now we're going to knock it back to a vintage semi-gloss. That's how I like to do most of my semi-gloss finishes. I just find that it works the best and this clear, the gloss clear is clearer in a way. I mean a good semi-gloss clear is of course good, but uh, the additives that they put into semi-gloss and satin clear coats and matte clear coats to make them semi-gloss satin or matte do have an impact on them, especially if you layer them. So I wanted to get a nice thick build on here. I did three coats my first session, sanded it down with 800 grit to make sure it was good to go for the next one and to try and flatten out some of that grain impact from the flame maple. And then I came back in with another three coats. So we're up to six total, although I probably sanded one off at least. And we've got our stencil and everything all set up. Generally, this thing's looking good. Fair bit of orange peel though, uh, certainly more than our finished product will have. So let's talk about what we need here. I've got obviously some sandpaper, 1000 to 2500 grit kicking around here that I can use with my sanding blocks. That's gonna be my first step to get this thing nice and flat. The higher the grit you can use, the less material you have to take off and the smaller the scratches you make, those all go hand in hand, the better off you're gonna be. So if you can do if you can get your coat smooth enough that you can flatten it out completely with a 2000 grit to start with, you're going to be in a good spot. We're going to lubricate this with some naphtha. I don't like using water on guitars. It can get into the holes and cause expansion. Not as big a deal with this automotive grade clear coat, but if you're using lacquer, for example, that can cause cracking. Lacquer and, and moisture don't really mix. This stuff evaporates really quickly, gets rid of some of the risk on that. So that's where we're starting. This thing's been sitting 24 hours since I clear coated it. You don't want to let this type of clear coat sit too long. It hardens up too much and becomes difficult to work with. After that, I'm going to kind of polish it up almost, if you will, using my Aberlon and Mirka Aberlon, really nice uh, sanding pads. If you want these or the dual action Dyna braid sander that I'm going to be using, I'll probably just use the 4000 grit. Uh, check out the Amazon link in the description. That's where you can get that. And of course, the guitar kit is available through the solo music gear link in the description as well. Final step for me is going to be coming in with this micro mesh. I've got my little sanding block here, although I might use it on my other sanding block. This is from Mohawk's Buff and Polish Kit, also available through that Amazon link. Uh, this stuff goes all the way up to 12,000 grit. When you sand something smooth at 12,000 grit, it's semi-gloss. It's basically what it is. I'm going to take a look at it at that point. Don't even know if I'll go all the way up there. 4,000 is basically semi-gloss already, kind of satiny. Uh, I'll take a look at it at that point, and if I want just a little extra shine because I've been given some creative leave on this one, then I'll go in with a little bit of polish and polish it up. But I want to avoid doing a really high gloss because that's not what the guy asked for. We're, we're aiming for semi-gloss on this one. So without further ado, let's get to work on probably my least favorite part of guitar kits. I, I love finishing work, but I, I hate the sanding and polishing process. Anyway, let's get after it. All right, let's get this finish leveled out. Now, these figured woods take a little bit more work to seal and a little bit more work to level because they're so porous. They tend to absorb a lot more finish and they tend to kind of end up a little textured, if you will. They get some low spots because there are low spots in the grain. Now, that doesn't mean it's impossible by any means, but it does take some more effort and you do have to build up more clear coat in order to be able to do the extra sanding required to get through it and in order to be able to remove enough off the top to make everything level without going all the way through the finish. That's always a risk um, and it's a risk with any finish, so you do need to be careful. Finish does build up a little bit heavier right around the pickups and stuff and it will build up less right on the corners, right on the edges. So if you're going to burn through, that's probably where it's going to happen. My recommendation to you is that you are careful in those areas and don't sand them any more than necessary. So I'm using the naphtha here and I'm 
keeping the surface reasonably lubricated and I'm also using it to clean off the surface kind of in between little sessions here as I go and you can see the progress that I've made there after a little while using probably some thousand grit if I remember correctly I'm using a block and I'm just going linearly now a lot of people like to uh, sand in circles it, it doesn't matter all that much I have nothing against that technique no objection to it uh, and I do that sometimes as well but on this one I'm going linear there's also nothing wrong with that Make sure you are using a block for this. Uh, it doesn't have to be a large block. A large block is, is a good thing, in, in my opinion. It helps keep a larger, even surface. But uh, you can do it with a smaller one. There are people who do their leveling work with really small things like erasers, for example. And there are people who use things like leveling beams and, and larger blocks that cover a large portion of the face of the guitar. It's more a matter of preference than anything else, but if you are using something this size or smaller, I recommend that you do it in sections. So you will have seen at the beginning, I kind of did one side at a time. Well, I'm still doing that. I'm going in and I'm kind of correcting, taking out the low spots one area at a time as I go. I've got this sped up quite a bit because I don't need you watching me sand for an hour, but that's kind of the gist of it you can see there are some lighter areas every time I dry this off and you do need to dry off relatively frequently when you're wet sanding so you can see where you're at um, those lighter areas are the spots that I've sanded and then the areas that still look dark those are still slightly glossy those are the low spots so we're trying to sand until we've essentially gotten rid of those with these first couple of grits it's okay to leave a little bit of that before you move on to the next grit because every grit that you use is going to continue sanding and is going to continue removing material. So in order to not remove any more of it than necessary, you can leave just a very little bit to take out with the higher grits, but you don't have to. It's, uh, it's sometimes safer and easier to go through all the way until everything is flat. The only thing there is you do run a greater risk, again, of burning through your finish. So the objective really is through this entire process to take off as little clear as possible while still getting everything perfectly flat and smooth. And generally that involves leaving until your later uh, grits that last little bit of removal and it also involves using as few grits as possible before moving on to what you would consider to be the polishing process. Now, this is a bit of a unique one in that the polishing process actually involves micro mesh instead of just polish. Uh, the micro mesh, the really high grit 4000 stuff, and the Mirka Abrilon in the 4000 grit really won't remove much material. So they're essentially part of the polishing process here because that's what's going to help us take this up to basically a semi-gloss. And at the time of me doing a voiceover on this, I know that we also end up using the medium polish for a quick pass, uh, that's from Mohawk as well, and for that I use one of my heavier compounding sponges. I'm not using my really fine polishing sponges, and I'm not using the fine polish, I'm using the medium polish, and that slightly denser, heavier uh, compounding sponge, that's one of the Chemical Brothers sponges, you can find those, uh, those sponge pads, the entire set of them in fact in the Amazon link in the description if you're at all interested in those. Uh, they work really well even though they're a little bigger. They're designed for a bigger polisher. They work really well with my little 3 inch polisher um, but they also work well with my 2 hand 5 inch polisher so that's kinda nice. It'd probably be even nicer if I wasn't weird enough to want to use a little one hand polisher all the time. Anyway the, the face of this is pretty much done now. I'm working with some 2500 grit just taking out the very last of the imperfections there and uh, and making sure that this thing is basically ready to go. There's still just a little bit left in there um, for me to go finish off with a little bit of 2000 on the Mirka Aberlon followed by some 4000. So these pads, well this sander is really nice of course. Uh, because it's got a flexible sanding pad on it. It's great for this sort of thing. And these pads are actually foam backed, these Mirka Aberlon pads. And uh, they do a great job of all sorts of stuff, including getting into the corners and whatnot. Now, there are guys who use these for the flat sanding portion. Um, but I find because they've got the pads there, they're kind of flexible. They will go into 
the texture or into the um, orange peel rather than removing it. So I'm not sure how those guys do that. Uh, I imagine maybe they just got their guns set up so well that they, they don't have as much to sand out. But that's not the case for me. So I don't use these for flat sanding. I flat sand either by hand or using a pad that isn't foam backed. And then I go in with the foam backed ones at the end to just finish taking out the scratches from the heavier grits essentially. Now the back of the guitar is not that highly figured wood and although I didn't go in with a sealer prior to applying my paint for this particular job because of what I was looking for here, uh, the back is a lot smoother so there's not as much open grain, we don't have those deep pores that we need to worry about in terms of our sanding process here. So this actually goes quite a bit faster. Now one thing to remember is black is the hardest uh, color to polish. It's, uh, it's very difficult actually to get a perfect gloss uh, finish on black fully polished out without any swirl marks or anything like that. It shows every little scratch. Uh, it's a difficult one. Difficult color to work with. Some of the, the guitars out of the factory you'll notice just have a little bit of haze in their black finish if you look carefully and that sort of thing. Um, in this case we're doing that semi-gloss so it's not as big an issue. We uh, semi-gloss. One nice thing about it is it kind of doesn't have that problem so much. You don't end up with such a prominent uh, little swirl mark in there because it's not full gloss when all said and done. So I'm sanding this flat as well, just like I did with the front, except it's a little bit easier this time, and uh, there's a little less work to do. And then I go in and I sand my edges. For this, I'm starting with a 1,000 grit or 1,500 grit, I can't remember, um, but it's just a, a foam-backed sanding pad by hand. The edges usually look pretty good, and on a full gloss finish, I often don't even bother. Uh, I just leave them as is and take out any imperfections if there are any, but I can't do that in this case. Uh, the paint went on too glossy because it's a gloss clear coat, so I have to take it back a little bit and then go in and fix that after. Now this is going to be a less involved process on the sides. I'm going to sand it up to 2500 grit um, by hand to just get everything kind of knocked back a bit and not full gloss. And then I'll come in with a little 3 inch polishing pad, uh, the rougher one, and a little bit of the medium polish and buff those back up to a nice semi-gloss. It won't take long, take fewer passes uh, than doing it to a gloss. I just have to be careful that I don't buff it up too much and that's something that you get used to after doing this a few times. The alternative if you're set up for it is to do all of your coating in gloss, sand it perfectly smooth and then add one nice semi-gloss final clear coat. Uh, that alleviates the trouble that you can sometimes have from building up a bunch of coats of matte or semi-gloss or satin. Uh, the problem is you have to make sure you don't get any dust in it otherwise you're back in the same spot and you have to sand it and buff it back up to semi-gloss anyway. So if you have any concerns about imperfections or sand or dust or anything like that in your finish, I say sand because I have a sandblaster in this warehouse, but what I mean is dust, um, then this is often a, an easier option. So I'm going in here, I just did by hand with a little bit of the micro mesh, very high grit stuff. I think I'm using 4,000 and 6,000 or 6 and 8 or something like that uh, and just kind of taking these sides back up to basically a semi-gloss and then you'll see me go in and finish that off later with the polisher like I said and finally I'm gonna do the neck here that's the last piece that I really need to sand on this other than the headstock um, which is just a simple matter of doing it with a block like the body the necks a little bit more complicated sometimes there's a little bit more buildup right around the edges of the heel because you've got to spray from a bunch of different angles to coat that section properly so that requires a little bit more uh, removal, a little bit more sanding to take all of that down. So I'm doing that right now with some, I think, 800 grit or 1000 grit. And then I'll go in and sand the entire back of the neck. Uh, I'm doing that, well, just by curving my hand around it. Now I did end up doing some easing work on the sides of this where the paint meets the fretboard. Because we tape off the fretboard when we go to spray, we end up with a ridge there, and you want to get rid of that for a nice nice feeling neck and, uh, and as much playability, if you will, as possible. So you do want to take that edge down, 
I don't show that in any detail in this video because I already did a video on that using this guitar actually. I did a video specifically about how to uh, lessen the, the feel of those edges on the edges of your fretboard, those ridges. So if you want to see that, go ahead and take a look. That is on my channel. Um, but for the purpose of this video, that was a step that I took. I'm finishing off the back here. I went in with my 4000 grit on the Abrilon. Got everything uh, nice and smoothed out. Well, it was already smooth, but kind of started buffing it. And I th think I've got 8,000 grit maybe on here now. Uh, and you can see my reflection starting to become more clear in the back of the guitar as this kind of comes up to a full semi-gloss using my micro mesh. So this is the 8,000 grit micro mesh. And I'm just, just bringing it up here one step at a time, bringing up this shine uh, until I decide that I've hit the semi-gloss that I'm looking for. I don't want to go too far on this, otherwise I'll have to sand it back and try again. Uh, not all the way, of course, but I'd have to knock back the gloss again. So I just do it a little bit at a time, and I've decided I want just a little bit more. So this orange pad, like I said, is my compounding pad. It's a little bit stiffer. Uh, I wipe or rub or massage or whatever you want to call it some of the compound, some of the medium polish into this pad before I go, before I get started so that it doesn't scratch or anything so it's, you know, it's loaded up and ready to go and then I wipe a little bit more onto the back of the guitar. It doesn't take all that much. Uh, a com common kind of misconception when people are starting out with polishing is they think they need to load up the back of the guitar with, with polish because more polish is better. Uh, that's not really the case. In fact, it, it tends to interfere, and it's a mistake that I made a few times at the beginning uh, when I was starting learning how to do this, but you just need enough to lubricate the pad and, and burn in and, and do the job, essentially. Keep in mind that polish and, uh, and compound are actually abrasives. They're extremely fine liquid-carried abrasives in this case uh, that essentially do the same thing as sanding. So, n not quite, they don't really ma remove material, but, but they sort of do. That's, that's what they're there for. They're there to smooth out the surface the rest of the way. And the way that they do that is with a very, very fine abrasive. So, you don't want a ton of it, because if you end up with big globs built up, they can actually cause their own kind of scratching. And that's also why you need to make sure that you're wiping down between stages when you're polishing, or between moving from compound to polish. Now this is a little bit odd, <laughs> but a technique that I actually like for next here, I use a little bit of polish to lubricate and, and kind of help buff it up a little bit uh, on some 4 aught steel wool. So I've got 4 o steel wool that I'm using right on the back of the neck. I do not want the back of the neck glossy at all. I don't want it to be semi-gloss or anything like that. I spoke to the, uh, the owner of the guitar and he agrees with me that that just tends to make your hand kind of grip onto it and stick. Uh, and that's not what we're looking for here. So the back of the neck on this one is a satin finish, um, but an abraded 4 out steel wool satin with a little bit of polish in there to just bring out a little extra shine as I did it. But it, I felt this thing many times to make sure that it was what we wanted or what I thought we were looking for on this. And uh, yeah, it's beautifully smooth. Hand runs over it real nice. And that's what we're looking for. Helps make it feel good when you're playing it. Polishing edges with a rotary polisher is a pain, I will admit. Uh, you can do it by hand. That is also a pain. And the guys who have the nice big buffing wheels, they, uh, they have an easier time of this sort of thing. If you're going to use the rotary polisher, just, just be careful. Make sure you've got the guitar secured well, that you're holding it well. Make sure you've got the polisher secured well and you're holding it well. And uh, be careful that it doesn't run away on you and smack into the guitar because uh, that's no fun. All right, I'm finishing up here with some of that medium polish on the front, doing the same thing that I did to the back, and I'm making sure I get all the contours and everything, of course. Uh, some of that is easier with the smaller pads, but these bigger pads that I have are just, they're just a higher quality item, and they get the job done a little easier and faster on the top, and they still flex around the contours because I've got the small uh, mechanism behind them, so. This is kind of the last step. This is where we're essentially going to leave this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will give you a look at the guitar and how it's looking in the next one.
So, no spoilers. Actually, if you've been watching the series, you will have already seen it, because I put it in the intro of a couple of them. But anyway, as always, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. If you did like it, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And remember to subscribe if you haven't already, so you can see how this project turns out and the other stuff I'm working on. Thanks again. Hope you liked it, and uh, have a good one. I will see you next time.